Hello everyone, I'll be talking about the 2012 Ig Nobel Prizes which were handed out this Thursday, September 20th at Harvard. And for those not familiar with the Ig Nobels, they're sort of a satirical version of the Nobel Prizes which of course are handed out for various breakthroughs in a wide diff field of different sciences. Now the Ig Nobels are handed out in a wild field as well, but these prizes are designed to award researchers who have come up with new innovations that first make you laugh, but then also make you think. And there are all sorts of interesting awards that are handed out, but before I want to, before I get to those, let's just mention this was put on by the Annals of Improbable Research, a bi-monthly magazine which highlights various strange research findings in science, and it was put on in association with the Harvard Radcliffe Society for, of Physics Students, the Harvard Radcliffe Science Fiction Association, and the Harvard Computer Society. So some pretty good organizations and some very interesting winners. Uh, so let's get to them. Now the first Ig Nobel Prize was the Psychology Prize, which went to Anita Erland, Rolf Zwan, and Tulio Guadalupe, all from the Erasmus University of Rotterdam, which is in the Netherlands, and none of them are in this picture. This was actually from the ceremony, and their paper was titled, Leaning to the Left Makes the Eiffel Tower Seem Smaller, Posture Modulated Estimation. And what they were trying to do was explain this strange effect where if you lean to the left, you're more likely to make a small estimation rather than a large one. So if you're guessing the size of the Eiffel Tower, you'll guess lower if you lean to the left. And they theorize that's because we picture numbers along a number line. So the small numbers would be on the left and they'd go higher and higher towards the right. So when you lean to the left, you're unconsciously triggering that number line phenomena. And we sort of make an estimation based on that. The next prize handed out was the Peace Prize, which went to the SKN company out of Russia. They got that for converting old Russian ammunition into nanodiamonds. Nanodiamonds are about half a nanometer, and they're used largely in polishing and lubrications and other things like that, and basically for not killing people, which is about the opposite of what ammunition would be used for. So I guess that's how you get the Peace Prize. Now, the next prize handed out was the Acoustics Prize, and this was awarded to Kazutaka Kurehaya and Koji Tsukada from Japan, and that was for creating the little device you see there, which is called the Speech Jammer. And it's also more cleverly, I think, known as the Shut Up Gun. And what this thing does is it basically disturbs a person's speech. So, while it's pointed at you, it will make your speech sound as if it's delayed by a few seconds after you said it. So basically you'll be talking and instead of hearing yourself in real time there'll be a slight delay which will kind of throw you off and the only way to stop that from happening is to stop talking. And what's really interesting is that it only works on you so everyone will hear your voice as it's sounding off but since you're not hearing it at the same time it's designed to be slightly disturbing and usually silences people. The next prize was awarded to Craig Bennett and Michael Miller from the University of California at Santa Barbara, as well as Abigail Baird from Vassar College and George Wolford from Dartmouth College for their paper, and this is kind of a mouthful, Neural Correlates of Interspecies Perspective Taken in the Postmortem Atlantic Salmon, an Argument for Proper Multiple Comparisons Correction. Now, what that basically means is they sort of use these fMRIs, which are a functional magnetic resonance imaging system, to detect blood flow in the brain. And what this is usually done is to measure how uh, activity is occurring within the brain by measuring blood flow. Pretty straightforward. But what they did is they measured the blood flow of a dead salmon, as you can see in this picture here. And the dead salmon actually had some results. Those little red spots are a reaction. And what they're trying to demonstrate is that false positives can sometimes occur when you're using these very specialized forms of equipment. And in case you're wondering, the human brain looks like this. 
when it's under the scans of an fMRI, obviously a lot of activity, but how much of that is genuine activity and how much of it is a false positive? Well, I think this study is a great indicator that we have to be a little more careful on what is or is not brain activity. The Chemistry Prize was awarded to Johan Peterson from Sweden, and because he figured out why several people in the town of Anderslov, Sweden, were suddenly with green hair. Now, it was something of a riddle, because initially people seemed to just have green hair. They don't really know what was happening. It just seemed to happen in houses with new homes, and people who like to take hot showers. Now, initially people thought it was the drinking water, and people were thinking perhaps copper was getting in them, because copper is capable of turning your hair green. Uh, well, dyeing your hair green. I'm not sure why ingesting it would do that, but that's what they initially thought it was. What they found out was that the copper was actually coming in through the pipes because uh, when the water is especially hot, it would peel off copper from within the pipes and water heaters, and it would get into the water, the water would go all over your hair, and suddenly you have green hair. The solution was pretty simple and that was to move into an older house with different pipes. The Literature Prize was awarded to the U.S. Government General Accountability Office and, and I'm going to quote this, the reason why is they issued a report about reports about reports that recommended the preparation of a report about the report about reports about reports. So what they were awarding it to was the actions needed to evaluate the impact of efforts to estimate costs of reports and studies. So basically a preparation of a report about the report about reports about reports. Wait, no. A report about reports about reports that recommends the preparation of a report about the reports about reports about reports. Obvious, right? Yeah, let's just move on to the next one. The next prize in physics was awarded to Raymond Goldstein of the University of Cambridge, Patrick Warren of Unilever R&D Port Sunlight, and Robin Ball of the University of Warwick. And you can see Patrick Warren here with a bunch of ponytails in the background because their paper is titled Shape of a Ponytail and the Statistical Physics of Hair Fiber Bundles. What they basically did was develop a mathematical formula which will be used to explain how uh, what sort of shape and what sort of motion someone's hair will take when it's put into a ponytail. And this seems kind of kind of a silly thing to study, but it's actually kind of neat that I mean a person's hair is often thought to be very sort of wild and unpredictable if you tie it back. Who knows how it'll shape, right? But it turns out this formula does a really good job of explaining just how it'll all come together. And it's sort of a small breakthrough on how we understand hair fibers. The Fluid Dynamics Prize was awarded to Ruslan Krechetnikov and Hans Meyer out of the University of California in Santa Barbara for their paper, Walking with Coffee, Why Does It Spill? Now it seems like a pretty obvious answer. If you walk with coffee, it will spill. But what they did was look at the shape of the mug, the legs of the person holding the coffee, and the coffee itself, and how all those variables come together to create a spill. And what they discovered is that coffee is most likely to spill between your seventh and tenth step. So, well, I guess if you have anything to take away from this is, if you need to walk with coffee, try to keep it under seven steps. The Anatomy Prize was awarded to Franz DeWall and Jennifer Picorni out of Emory University in Atlanta, and it was awarded for their paper Faces and Behinds, Chimpanzee Sex Perception. Now, what they were trying to do is discover whether or not chimpanzees could tell the sex of another chimpanzee based on pictures of their behind. And they did that because a chimpanzee looking at the face of another chimpanzee it doesn't really know won't be able to really tell if it's male or female. Of course, if they look at the behind, it turns out that's a much more <laughs> likely way of discovering the, whether or not another chimp is a male or a female. It's largely because female chimps have this sort of pink 
balloon thing on their ass. And what was also interesting and kind of a surprise is that chimps can actually recognize a familiar behind and they'll be able to tell which face goes with it. So apparently when it comes to chimps, they're more likely to recognize a friend from their rear rather than their front. Now the final prize, and perhaps the most important one if you think about it, is the Medicine Prize which was awarded to Emmanuel Ben Susan and Michael Antonetti from France. And, well, it took me a while to figure out what picture to use for this one, and I decided to go with a serious one because it's, it's funny, but it's also kind of scary. And they won their Medicine Prize because they advised doctors on how to perform a colonoscopy and minimize the chance that their patients will explode. This is, yeah, it's kind of terrifying to be getting a colonoscopy and think you might explode, but it turns out there is an increased chance of colonic explosions occurring if you don't properly cleanse the equipment before you go in. And <laughs> I don't think anyone really wants a colonoscopy, but having explosions occur while you're having a colonoscopy seems like it'll just make things worse. And I want to share the concluding line from the abstract, and it reads, Coagulation by APC is an effective and safe treatment of HRP if a complete cleansing preparation is performed to avoid explosion. Which is probably my favorite concluding sentence from any abstract ever. And even though the chances might have been slim, I am so glad they authored this paper to prevent colonic explosions. So there were your 2012 Ig Nobel Prize winners. I hope you learned a little bit, and thanks for watching.